In a world of talkers, Matt Burke is a doer. His list of accomplishments speak for themselves. Harvard University graduate, NFL All-Pro, Walter Payton Man of the Year, Super Bowl champion. Matt's unique resume gives him a one-of-a-kind perspective that is extremely valuable. Hello, St. Ambrose community. This is Matt Burke, and it's good to be with you, albeit virtually and spiritually. I know this is a big day for the students and the families and the entire school and community of St. Ambrose, so it is my pleasure to be with you, mainly because I believe Catholic education is probably the best thing going right now. And when I say Catholic education, I mean truly authentic, vigorous Catholic education. Uh, and so I know that's what St. Ambrose is about. And so it's a, it's a great honor to be here and just share a few thoughts with you. First, I'd like to talk to the parents. I'd like to commend the parents on choosing Catholic education for your children. Um, I'm a parent myself, and I don't think there's anything probably more important than that we can give our kids than a strong Catholic foundation uh, as they're being formed. And uh, I know St. Ambrose is a great ally uh, with you, the family, in helping provide that for your children. I also know that it is a sacrifice, uh, but you should be commended on the choices that you make. And uh, I'm sure you know that the, the ROI, the return on that investment, will come, will come down the road. I'd also like to express uh, gratitude and admiration for the teachers and the staff at St. Ambrose. Uh, I, once in a while, I'm allowed to teach at a Catholic high school, just like one or two classes in a day. And it's absolutely exhausting. <laughs> I don't know how you do it day after day uh, after day. Uh, and certainly know that you also uh, are making sacrifices, although maybe you wouldn't consider it a sacrifice, being able to combine uh, your faith and your work and to give and reveal to kids the, the whole truth. But, uh, but you do make professional sacrifices to teach at a Catholic school as well. And uh, so you know that you have my, my admiration and my, my applause. And that gets us to the students. Uh, students, you, you heard me talk about the parents and the teachers and the sacrifices that they have made for you. Uh, you certainly should be, should be celebrated today and enjoy this day. But hopefully you realize that you did not get here by yourself, that there are a lot of people who took the time and invested in you. And so it's important that you, that you thank those people. They're not doing it for, for thanks, but it would go a long way if you, uh, if you expressed your gratitude to them. One of the great things about the sacrifice too is what you've been able to experience is love. There is no love without sacrifice. Nobody, nobody made a greater sacrifice than Jesus when he died on the cross for all of our sins. But, and that was the ultimate act of love. Love is not a, a feeling uh, or, or an emotion. Uh, it's a sacrifice. And oftentimes it, it hurts a little bit. And you were the recipients of love. And I hope, uh, I hope you realize that. So in these commencement speeches, a lot of times, I guess, the speaker is supposed to tell you, supposed to inspire you, and then tell you how to go out and have a great life, right? We all, we all want, uh, we all want to have great lives, you know. We can all agree on that, regardless of where we come from. But what does that mean, to have a, to have a great life? There are, there are three things, I believe, that all great lives have in common. Um, you, can, you can test me. You, you can tell me if I'm wrong. The first thing, you can't, you can't have a great life without virtue. Virtue is, well, the Catechism says that the goal of a virtuous life is to become like God, to become closer to God. 
I tell my kids, your, your job, your job is to strive for virtue every single day. What, is, what, what does that mean? What are, what are virtues? Well, we know faith, hope, and love. But I also like to focus on the four cardinal virtues of prudence, temperance, justice, and fortitude. Prudence, wisdom, temperance, self-control, justice, doing right, and fortitude to keep going. Work on developing those four things regardless of you, if you're in school, if you're at a job, if you're married, if you're single, if you're 18 years old, or if you're 44 years old. Make it your lifelong quest to strive for virtue. Think about all, all the great lives. I'm not talking about, you know, some, sometimes we hold up people who have done great things and we say, well, they, they were a great person or they had a great life. Uh, I don't think winning a Super Bowl uh, makes that that doesn't constitute that doesn't make up a great life necessarily. Making a million dollars that's that that doesn't mean you had a great life. But you look at everybody, regardless. Maybe it's somebody like like Mother Teresa, Saint Teresa of Calcutta, or Saint John Paul II, or look at Winston Churchill, or I mean, I don't. You go throughout history. I mean, maybe maybe Catholic people inside the church, maybe not, but they all achieved a high level of virtue. That's number one for a great life. Strive for virtue. Number two, we were created by God. We all know that we are children of God, made in his image and likeness. What does that mean? What, what were we made for? We were made for beauty, goodness, and truth. That's what we were made for because those things are of God. So strive to Fill yourselves up with those things every day. Fill yourselves up with those and try to create those moments as well in this world. Beauty, goodness, and truth. Because those don't, those, don't, those don't speak to the mind. Those, those speak to the heart. And I guess when, when you look at, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there, right? Nothing, nothing is neutral. I don't think there's anything is neutral. Maybe just the color gray, that's it. So whether it's who you're hanging out with, what you're consuming via media, TV, social media, movies, what books you're reading. I mean, all, all these things are going to contribute to first the, the thoughts, the thoughts in your head, and then also eventually what's, what's in your heart. And so be intentional. Don't just kind of be like, oh, whatever, but be intentional about filling spaces, filling moments in your life with beauty, goodness, and truth, or creating those moments uh, for others as well. The third thing that you have to know if you want to have a great life is that it's not about you. It's not about you. Society tells us, and I'm talking mostly us young people, Right? Our culture says, it's all about you. It says, if it feels good, do it. Uh, you deserve it. You know, more, more, more. Can be a consumer. Uh, that's probably the, probably the quickest way to a miserable life that I know. We have to understand that we were put here not to be served, but to serve. Just like, just like Jesus. And it's countercultural. It might even seem counterintuitive, but it's not. And once again, I'll go back and look at all the examples you can think of of people who've had great lives throughout history. It was never, it was, it wasn't about what they did. It wasn't about them. It was about what they did for other people. And some of those people you'll read about in history books. There's a lot of people who have had great lives who you will never know their names. Uh, they, they don't get their names in the paper, on the TV. They don't have a million Instagram followers. They just quietly go about their business every single day, doing what they can for their fellow man. Might be, it might be a neighbor who, who looks after someone who's, who's elderly. Uh, it might be... It might be the janitor at a school. Uh, you just, you never know. 
I guess what I'm trying to say is that greatness is not determined by worldly things. Uh, because worldly things are often, um, in the grand scheme of things, they're pretty trivial. And they don't really matter. And so I think it's important as you fit, close this chapter on your life and go on to whatever is next, you have to realize that there is a lot of, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of competition for your attention and a lot of competition for your mind and your heart. And you have to be intentional about what you stay focused on and to make sure that you stay stay focused on the important things um, because God didn't create you to be to be average uh, to do I mean all these things in the world I'm, I, I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to go on you're, you're going to achieve great things you're going to have great worldly success I'm, these these worldly success and greatness are not mutually exclusive necessarily but focus on greatness focus on developing virtue Focus on beauty, goodness, and truth, and focus on doing things for other people. Um, and that's that's that, that that's what constitutes a great life. Um, and that's what that's what all of you were called to do because you were you were made and you were built for greatness. God bless you.